Hey y'all, it's a windy day, the dam's running hard, but I had to get the little Ginu out today and run it. Um, I've done so much work on it. For those of you that don't know, it's been a weird summer, you know, for I'm sure everybody else has had one with viruses and Lord knows what all else has gone on, but I actually got pinned down by a tree this spring and, and, and lost a, a little bit of a, a knee in the process and gained a plate and a few screws. So. I've been on crutches for 15 weeks and then trying to rehab everything else, so I don't know if I had a midlife crisis or what, but this is what my wife's calling this, a midlife crisis boat. I picked up a little 13-foot Ginu that was in really bad shape uh, in a few places now. The rest of the hull looked great for being the age that it was, you know. but it, it just goes to show you with fiberglass, if, if you have damage and you don't take care of it pretty quickly it can develop into worse problems and this one actually ended up with a uh, had a crack all the way through the hull and uh, so I, I got a little bit of money off of it and was able to pick it up for for what I consider a pretty good deal but I got the boat and the trailer and brought it home and, and started doing some work on it and, I, and I'll shoot you some pictures of, of, of what I did if you could see if you got any questions just holler at me I spent more money than what I needed to but I didn't want to build it back cheap I wanted to, to, to go back with with good stuff when I went in with it so I use West, West Systems Epoxy, and yes, that's expensive, but it is, it is worth it. Because I, I actually went with some Bondo, uh, uh, tried to use some Bondo resin on another part of it, and just dealing with, with the West Systems and dealing with the Bondo, it's not even in the same realm. So if you're going to do a project that you care for, definitely look into that West Systems. It was worth its money. But I ended up repairing the hole in the bottom, which was the worst one was right in the keel. The rest of them were done actually by the rollers on the trailer. This trailer was never set up for this boat, and the trailer damaged the boat. It's hard to believe it, but that's exactly what happened. So I, I fixed the three or four spots on the bottom, one that had to be fixed, and a couple that I just wanted to make sure that they didn't turn in anything worse. I ran an entire another layer of, of glass down the keel, because I run the river, so I know I will most likely be around some rocks. So I wanted that sacrificial part to, to have another layer of glass. So I did that. Then I coated the entire bottom with Wetlander, which is a slick, protective coating, kind of like they use on airboats and other things like that. So I'm hoping that that will give me a little bit of protection, as well as a little bit of wear resistance when I put it up into sand or around oysters. And that's the whole thing. This is not going to take the place of my kayaks in any way, shape, or form. I still love my kayaks. I love my big center console. This was just another way. For the days that I really want to get into places that only the kayaks can get me, but I want to go far to get there. Uh, things like Point Off Chain or running down to St. Mark's where I want to run a long way. Uh, go down to the, to the Everglades and different things like that where I, I've got to get far to get to any place that other folks can't get to and still be able to access water that big boats can't get up into. This thing will run basically in frog spit. So anyway, back to the fixing up. Alright. After I did the wetlander I flipped her over and I did a, a flat floor conversion. Now these things can be a little flexible on the inside just because all it is is chop mat. I mean, that's the, that's the whole build is made out of chop mat. So I, I wanted to, to have a little bit more substantial floor, and I removed the center seat. You can see here, this is the side of where the center seat actually was at. And that opens up this whole area to, to have more usable place, more usable space. 99% of the time, this boat's going to be a solo boat for me. This is my solo skiff. So that's exactly what I was aiming for with this. But the flat floor, I went with a, uh, a half inch exterior grade plywood. I couldn't find a marine plywood anywhere near me that wasn't going to charge me like $400 to ship it. And I mean, I ain't that cheap, but goodness gracious, no, sir. So uh, what I did was I actually encased that plywood all the way around with fiberglass and resin. So it's, it's totally covered up. Any penetration that was in it is... Uh, has been treated with either resin or a, a product like 5200 just to protect that. So, but I did the flat floor in the back and then I did the flat floor up front. And the reason it doesn't match is because they were not done at the same time. Somebody decided that after the fact that I wanted to do the front too. But I'm really glad that I did the front because this makes it so much easier to stand. Otherwise, I was on a, a huge incline up here and it was just, it was a pain in the butt to stand here. But I've got a, a drain going through so it'll, any water will go through the back, out the, out the back of it. Mounted the battery up front just for ballast. I redid the seats and put uh, good seat posts in. That way I can run this seat forward and aft if I want to. The 
stand-up column post is, is bolted in on this side and and since I had to have this column in here for that I figured might as well do something useful with it but that's why I, I just got the rod holders and the cup holder just to I didn't want something in here that wasn't going to do something for me the transom was in good shape uh, they had never had anything more than a trolling motor on this boat but that's something you always want to check on the Ginoos is the transom being glass it's simple to fix so I mean if you do find one with issues if I could fix it anybody could fix it but what I did was end up bending some steel to go over the top so it's bolted on and stuck with a really good RTV and then I actually added a couple of eye bolts here just in case I need to tow some of my buddies that are out there with kayaks you know you got to look out for your friends I've been towed before I'll, I'll return the favor and the nose cap on this one which some of them are aluminum and some of them are plastic mine was plastic and it was already it was cracked up here so I went back with that same steel that I made the transom out of and made a new nose cap so it protects this whole area and while I did I, I made my trolling motor mount for it so this is a good place I can I've got cleats I can put a, a anchor rope out or whatever but I just figured this is my bow line for whenever I'm running back and forth I did add a stainless bow line for cranking it up onto the trailer now that is the weirdest thing of the whole deal I have never had a mud motor I have never driven a mud motor this is all new to me but I wanted this thing to run in you know six inches of water without worrying about a lower unit I didn't want to worry about tangling it with weeds because if I'm down there on the Wasissa or other places that I'm running up in a sometimes point on Shane it really gets choked up with weeds I wanted to be able to run in that stuff if I wanted to so I looked around and found this. This is the PPF mud motor kit. This is the Wood Duck. It's a six and a half horsepower Briggs and Stratton engine. It, it's, I wouldn't call it inexpensive by any way, shape. There's nothing with a boat that's inexpensive, but it was a lot cheaper than putting an outboard on here. Uh, and for me, I, I didn't really want it. I don't, I don't care that it's not gonna run, you know, a thousand miles an hour. I get about 10 mile an hour out of it. It runs four and a half with it just cranked and laying in the water. So if I just crank the motor and stick it there, it does four and a half mile an hour, which is already faster than I can paddle. This is my, this is my own invention, but this is just a taut line hitch. Whenever you're up front, it tends to get a little squirrely back here. So I wanted to be able to adjust the angle on the motor. So this just holds so I have my, my uh, rudder in the back while I'm running the trolling motor up front or if I'm launching so that the motor doesn't hang down too far. Now I had this jack plate that I bought for another project that never came to fruition and this one's rated for 20 horsepower and 115 pounds. Well this is only six and a half horsepower and only weighs 60 pounds so I'm well within the parameters on this jack plate and this is nice because it moves the, boat, the motor up or down away from me or toward me whatever I choose wherever I need it to go and uh, this is a pretty neat little old setup so far. Well, there she is, my little, whatever you want to call it, midlife crisis boat. And we'll see. You know, I, I may love it. I may hate it. I haven't fished it serious yet. So uh, that's coming. That's coming very soon. You know, I've got space for a little low riding cooler. So I think I could do some camping out of it if I wanted to. It's got some seriously good possibilities. I'll keep you posted. We'll see.